Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gore Call, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out big news. Guys, if you believe in the future of artificial intelligence and it's on the mind of all investors who are now searching for the real AI companies out there, not the companies that are just using as a buzzword uh, in their press releases, then look no further than Foby AI that's announced a record contract that we've talked about before. We'll mention it again. Record financials for Q3 in the, for, for the first nine months of the year. And they're given guidance for even more record revenue. So the company is not just talking the talk. They're walking the walk and they're delivering AI. How are they doing it? They become a global leader in digital wall of past technology that uses AI to deliver real-time data analytics to drive customer activation engagement both online and in the real world in stores, stadiums, arenas, hotels, you name it. Their customers include BevWorks, the company where they announced a record contract, $10 million, five-year contract, the Oscars, NASDAQ, NCAA, Partners, TELUS, Amazon, and too many more to mention. Integrations include Lightspeed, Shopify, again, too many more mentioned, and multiple acquisitions that have brought the company to this stage where they're now announcing record Q3. Rob, welcome back, my friend. Good morning, George. Thanks for having me today. Hey, listen, great having you. Congratulations, man. We had the uh, investor webcast yesterday. That went great. A lot of people were happy with what they saw. That spurred on some some more questions. We'll talk about the financials, uh, but first, what I want to ask you is: Now that you've gotten to this this state, are you an artificial intelligence story or a digital wallet story? Well, I say we're both. We're they're one and one a. Um, you know, we started off as a data intelligence company, George, that was fixated on unlocking and leveraging the world of data, bringing it to life through automation and machine learning and algorithms. And that's what we've been building for the last five years. I looked at the digital wallets. There's no arguing the world's going digital and mobile. Um, we've, we've been on the forefront of driving this innovation over the last two and a half years since we first acquired PassCreator out of Germany. Um, the wallet becomes our world today. And really it's the, the canvas and the activation channel for us. And whether that's Paul Sayar, of course, whether that's a ticket to the Oscars, an access uh, entry co component to the NASDAQ or whatever that may be, uh, everything is from a digital perspective. So the combination of artificial intelligence and digital is uh, really the key to what we do. But you were way ahead of everybody at AI, way ahead. I mean, let's face it, 98% of the world started talking about AI in November <laughs> with the release of ChatGBT. You've been way ahead of that. So is the industry, your target markets, your target verticals, are they starting to recognize you for the unbelievable AI tech stack you built that actually delivers all of this? Well, George, I think it's the key is, like I said, we've, uh, we, we've been running out of this for now five years and we've operated in 150 countries worldwide. So I'll leave it to you to judge whether you know, we're uh, ambulance chasing with a story and buzzword, as you no, said, but, uh, you know, we've, we've got top tier clients, we've got top tier applications, and at the end of the day, we solve fundamental problems. The biggest problems today is interoperability across ecosystems, as we see this by way of airport and security and infrastructure. Um, we start to look at the world of ticketing and sports and entertainment, healthcare, they're all riddled with silos. Um, and that's what we do is we, we bring connectivity, we bring interoperability and provide data access and security. I also read in between the lines myself, I, I noticed something in your financials, which is you've reduced headcount and expenses significantly, and yet you're setting record revenues. And there was a time a year ago, maybe right in the middle of COVID, where you're talking about saying our biggest problem, George, is we can't find or keep good people because there's just so much crazy demand for everybody but now it doesn't see just from the numbers am i right in saying that are you using ai internally to because i don't see any other way to, to bridge that gap how do you reduce expenses to headcount so much and hit record revenue so how big of a role is ai playing for you internally a huge part i mean it, it we we use it right across all of our organization whether it's the onboarding of clients whether it's our marketing communication shareholder updates 
these are all auto generated now. And for us, when we started to look, you know, obviously the market crash wasn't uh, or shouldn't have been a surprise to anyone. So back in last, I guess it would have been July, uh, we started to look at how do we reduce headcount? How do we ensure that all of our automation touches every single aspect of our business? And we're operating at a seven to eight X multiple of what we were from output with a 70% reduction. So if for people that don't believe in AI and automation, uh, they might want to think again. A serious question. Are you Rob Anson or are you an AI avatar from Phoebe right now? <laughs> we're talking to. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty scary, some of the stuff, quite honestly. Um, yeah. you know, there, there, there is a lot of stuff that I get presented with on a daily basis that the public hasn't seen yet. That it's uh, it is, it's a little frightening, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I get asked a lot, does, you know, AI replace, you know, humanity? I don't think it replaces humanity, but it, it's definitely going to replace people that don't embrace it and become subject matter experts. You know, I, I even laughed at my kids that are, you know, early high school years. And I was like, guys, you know, we should reconsider your, your education and just focus solely at home on artificial intelligence, because you'll be five years ahead of the game of anyone that comes out of school. And in probably six months, you, you'll be one of the most intelligent people in uh, in our society. It's moving yes. that fast. Side conversation: High schools and colleges just can't keep up with AI. There's no way they can adjust their curriculum. Well, it's not that, so. George. It, it, no, I, I agree. Um, you know, not to get into educational conversation or political, but we, it's um, the the world is going to move so fast in the next two years that. Half of the businesses that are, are current today will not exist. All right. Well, hey, the good thing for Phoebe AI shareholders is that you saw this coming. You incorporated AI on the product side. You've now obviously incorporated AI on the internal side. So at least Phoebe shareholders can benefit from that. And that's how I start off at the beginning of all this, which is if you're a shareholder looking for a good artificial intelligence story, that's not just George Com AI, take a drink for everyone who's, who's, who asks when, how many times we use George Com as an example. Uh, but uh, everyone's kind of trying to incorporate into the press releases as a sidebar, and you've been doing this for, for years. So that's translated. Let's look at the numbers. Q3, 1.255 million in revenue, up 300, 298. I'm going to round up to 300, up 300%. And 150% sequential over Q2. Um, how happy are you with the res that result? But from listening to your tone yesterday on the on the investor webcast, that sounds like you're not even impressed with that because there's a lot more there's a lot more coming. It almost seems like yeah, I expect you that. But talk to us about how how you feel, how the shareholders should feel, uh, and you know what what's coming because I want to talk about something you said in your in your quote. It is, uh, it's like I said, for me, as I stated yesterday, this is just the beginning. Um, we've put in a great deal of work here over the last several years, and it's nice to see, uh, you know, the fruits of labor come to fruition, if you will. Uh, shareholders should be very optimistic. Uh, I don't think we see these levels for very long. Um, you know, there's been a great deal of concerted effort to, to hold us down and suppress us here for many reasons, but I think we're due for a very serious breakout. Uh, very near future. We've got uh, a lot going on, as you can appreciate and understand. And then this is just the, just the beginning as to what, what is to come in, in Q4 and next year. Obviously, our year ends June 30th for those wondering what I'm talking about. But yep. uh, our, our Q4 is now underway and uh, things are rolling. And you gave guidance there, which I don't think you've ever done before, Rob. At least I don't recall you giving specific in writing guidance other than hey yep. we expect to do more next quarter next year 1.5 million dollars and that sounds like a round number you just can't say hey that it's it's not like 1.485 so it, when i see round numbers like that it usually means you're playing it safe but even if we take that number combine it with q3 that's 2.75 million dollars in revenue over two quarters q3 and q4 so you're effectively now on a 5.5 million dollar run rate for the for the next 12 months um, uh, is that, you know, yeah, that our, our, our goal here, George, like I said, you know, I said almost probably nine months ago now and people laughed at me, uh, which no problem. 
I, I love those people. But, um, you know, that's my goal is to be cash flow positive. And like I said, with the market break, you know, blowing up, we had such a high run rate, people thought I was crazy. And uh, here we are, surprise, surprise. Uh, we'll, we'll come in at that number. And like I said, we haven't given guidance before because early stage for me was as much as pilots and getting the technology out there, educating the market. Now we see the relevancy of our tech stack with AI and digital wallets and credentials and these things. Um, you know, it couldn't be more well-timed. The market is educated. The market is ready. And like I said, 99% of our business is all inbound. So it's, uh, it puts us in a very strong position. How is your pipeline looking? How, how is the inbound just happening because your reputation as a company now precedes you and the world is running a path to your door or is it still great marketing? I don't know how. How's that inbound? How's that inbound looking? How's that pipeline looking? Well, I think we did a good job early. Um, you know, there's a lot of companies, I think, that come out and blow their doors out, out of the gate. You know, we won very hard out of the gate, but it was to build infrastructure and credibility in the market. Infrastructure and key technology and team, uh, credibility through pilots. We went as broad and wide as possible. Now we're laser focused and very refined. And as you see with addition of Colby, I've got someone now who can, you know, work at the Close. same speed and focus that I can, which has been a, a true godsend. So it's uh, it's very exciting. I, I think, you know, obviously the the pipeline, there's, you know, I, I've spoken over the last few months as to where the focus is. People see that, they see the renewals, they see the contracts, they see the, the additional hires. All the hires are based on revenue. So like I said, we're continuing to elevate you know, margin and profitability and even across the board. Once we get past Q4, Rob, do you expect to provide the market with further guidance with it on a quarter by quarter basis? Probably not on an annual basis. I don't, I don't know if very many companies have that much. I mean, you probably have great visibility, but any AI company looking at a year, I mean, you might be underestimating or overestimating. What kind of guidance do you think, if, if any, will you continue to give them? No, not, I mean, this is part of it, George, is that, as I was saying, early days, you know, I'd, I'd say we're all over the map. I mean, I didn't know what to expect each quarter because there was so much one-time revenue because of project base. Now that we're over 80% uh, reoccurring revenue, it's a lot easier for us to, to, you know, understand where we'll be. Of course, we'll have one-time revenue and big licenses and projects, of course, that for IFRS can, you know, put over the term of that and deliverables, but um, no, we'll, we'll give guidance again. And uh, I think we'll be in a position to, to hopefully give uh, an annual outlook as well. Uh, safe to say that given the fact that that's a great point, I want to bring that up that so much of your revenue is recurring revenue before it just be, used to be chunks, a chunk here, a chunk here. And you didn't know when that chunk was coming in. So you didn't have that visibility. Now you've got such a high percentage of recurring revenue. Um, is it safe to say, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I got to ask is the, will the record quarters just continue over time because you've got this recurring revenue as a foundation and you're just building the pipeline on top of it. Yeah. And, and I mean, I've always kind of said this from day one, that, you know, this isn't a, a trade. If people are going to try to trade and, you know, time it here, it's going to be tough. Um, for us, I've been very focused, George, is to long-term sustainability and viability. From day one, I've always strived to build infrastructure, uh, infrastructure and leading technology, infrastructure and team and support. And now it's the execution of my vision and focus as to where we're seeing this. And, and that's what we've done. We built a great base and I continue to see the momentum occurring. As I said, our, our product stack is just so ripe and relevant for, for our world today. And like I said, I made a, a pretty big bets two and a half, three years ago now as to where the world is headed. And I'm very proud to say I was bang on. Yep. You put your money where your mouth is. You never, you never wavered. You said this word's going. You didn't chase the flavor of the day. Uh, and, and here we are. And it's awesome to watch. Is there, look, your technology we've seen as applying to any number of verticals, beverage, beauty and fashion, retail, I mean, every ticketing, Oscars, I mean, so there are no verticals that you can't touch. Are there any verticals that you think at some point 
you'll have to start focusing on or you want to start focusing on because they're just bigger, bigger ticket? Or will you just continue to, you know, take on all verticals as, as they come in? Because that's a great problem to have. That's an awesome problem to no, have. It is. I mean, you handle we, it all. we're very focused in, in insurance and financial services. We work with four of the top 10 global companies worldwide now. That's a big focus. We're continuing to grow those deals. Obviously, we've renewed them all as well. And as I'm uh, quite proud as to the renewals versus the sales, it's always the after sale to me is where you win long term credibility and value for our clients. Um, you know, I think that healthcare is something that we've been focused on as a it's a bit of a slower uh, beast, as you can appreciate for sure, but huge opportunities. Um, the world of blockchain has been knocking on our door for the last year and a half. Um, you know, I haven't done anything really to date in it. I've sort of watched the industry come and go and settle per se. And I think that's a huge opportunity for us based on our technologies and becoming a gateway, if you will. Um, of course, once again, everything is always about data. So having that infrastructure leads us to great opportunities right across any sector. I think the world of uh, transportation, Airports uh, are big opportunities for us as well. I think anytime there's human movement and security involved, it's always about processing data. It's about credentials and moving people in a timely fashion from point A to B. Um, I think we continue to see a great deal of growth as well in physical bricks and mortar with malls and stuff that we're currently working with today and building mobile integrated data solutions and structures. and. I think the uh, the whole digital world and digital transformation for us is on is on the forefront of everything, and it's on the forefront of everyone's minds. I can guarantee you that much. By the way, all that resort and casino that's been a uh, uh, something that all of us are kind of looking forward to because we all you know we all talk about one day we'll have our AGMs there, or whatever. Is that still is that still moving along nicely? Everything right on track there. Yeah, it's a huge project. It's uh, you know it's years away, but uh, we'll definitely have a spot there, and I look forward to that. They've got a great team, and there's many projects. Um, you know, I'm hoping that we land that. Uh, much like all net, uh, the world's evolving very, very quickly, and more so outside North America, which is exciting to see. You know, a lot of the 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 projects in Dubai and stuff where there's a lot of growth and development as you know as you're recently visiting um yep. had to go check it out it's unbelievable the brains are there the future is there is unbelievable the world of smart cities is you know kind of reclassified now and uh it's really becoming about identity security human movement um you know i think we're gonna see a big change in our world here in north america with digital currency over the next uh, coming months, unfortunately. And uh, it's gonna be really interesting because once again, it's gonna be a lack of interoperability across systems, currencies, networks, platforms. And that's absolutely right for our technology. So we're in a good spot, George. Um, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with progress, but uh, obviously I'm very focused as to the big prize. Most of your investors are North American. North American, and most of them are Canadian, I would assume. Um, do you think they have a, do you think when you say things like that about the digital transformation taking place, I've seen it firsthand, especially in Dubai. How do you get that message across to your investors? Say, guys, everything is going digital. Like literally everything is going to be, every, the, the stop sign is going to be digital at some point. Um, you know, how do you get that point across so that your investors, I mean, they're happy with what, you're putting up results. So obviously whatever you say, you know what you're talking about because it's resulting in record revenues and record bottom line. But how do you get the message across to everybody? You know, what should everybody be doing to understand that this digital transformation is happening even though we don't see it in Canada and yeah. the United States? I think it's um, a lot of people choose not to see it. Quite honestly, they like to keep their head buried in the sand and they like to think that our world is is as it is today and our world is going to flip on its head. And, you know, uh, everything here is government agenda driven. It's, uh, it's just the way it, it is. And um, not to get political here, of course, but uh, it's, it's gonna look a little different here in the next six months. So I would strongly suggest people start researching um, 
Google and chat GPT is a very powerful thing. And like I said, I don't really care anymore what people think, George. Um, you can either believe or you don't. And those that do believe will be somewhat prepared or alternative solutions versus reactive. And unfortunately, 90% of the investment world is reactive to what they see in media versus what they choose to you know, dig into and find themselves. True or false, my opinion is that this, this, uh, this digital transformation taking place now is going to be is going to have a five x bigger impact on all of our lives than internet when we start seeing it in nineteen emerge in nineteen ninety seven. Uh, do you think I'm exaggerating that? Am I underestimating that? Help just help no, people I, at home understand how big of a transformation this is going to be. I, I said last week hundred uh, x. This, this this will be the the biggest force transformation. Not just it's not just our, our in the markets or any of these stories, George. It's it's our daily lives. He said, "I'm in these meetings. Um, I, I'm privy to a lot of what's coming and what they're trying to do. There's a lot of change coming, like a lot of very scary change, and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see where where things go um, and how fast it goes because there's going to be a lot of people once again wonder what the hell happened." Well, maybe Rob, we can get together for uh, a Zoom in the future, and maybe just have that as the conversation. You know, maybe next couple of months or the next two, three months, it would be great. I think it'd be really valuable to the FOBI shareholders who are loyal to and believe in the company. It maybe might be a great idea for you and I to just sit down and and shoot the breeze on you know the different ways that uh, their lives going to be impacted, what you see coming down the road, and uh, and uh, if you're if you're if you're not that you wouldn't be willing if you have the time to do something like that i'd, I'd really welcome that because i think everyone should know uh how things how their lives are going to change yeah i think if you look at uh, no i'm always happy to when i have time of course and I'm extremely busy right now but i think you know for people they should be researching i mean you look at all the bills that are being passed by even our canadian government today um it should be very clear as to the direction of where they're taking this i mean you're even talking about vaccination passports coming back to play which is uh, hard to believe, but um, yeah, I'm always happy to join when I can and encourage people to get out there and get prepared and look at the future. There's a lot of stories out there in the markets right now that, uh, you know, um, have put a lot of people and investors in hard spots. And, uh, you know, it's uh, unfortunate to see where the world's at. It's uh, quite honestly uh, hard to believe where we are today and as a society and I think right now it's uh, for a lot of companies, a lot of people and individual households, it's just survival mode, you know, and I've, I've been living through that for the last eight months and, and I'm very happy to be proud of my team for focusing as to where we are. Um, you know, progress is my biggest happy point, I think, because if you look at the macro, it becomes very overwhelming. And, uh, you know, I like to focus on the micro, uh, what's in front of me today and check boxes and, that's really been the, the key to our success here and my team's performance in the last uh, eight months. Yeah, you and me both. I keep looking at the big picture, what's coming. People around the dinner table think I'm crazy when I talk about it. But you have to check off the micro boxes in order to get to the macro. And sometimes it, the macro yeah. is overwhelming. But better that we all know about it, better that Phobie shareholders not only know about it, Rob, but they're benefiting from it. So I'm going to congratulate you for two things. One, the obvious, black and white, the record financials. Uh, that's just fantastic. But two, you put your money where your mouth is. And by the way, we haven't talked about this, and but people have seen it. You you didn't just put your money with your where your mouth was with an opinion of where the world was going over the last three years. You invested big money into your company, out of your own pocket, into private placements, uh, because you weren't just you weren't just talking it, you're walking it. So congratulations on all the fronts, the vis the vision the execution and and putting your money down and showing investors, hey, I put my money down because I believe in this. And uh, you're a leader, man. And I congratulate you on that. And I think all Fulby shareholders are are lucky to have you. But there are always going to be some that are going to complain. We know that, you know, some people hate Elon Musk, right? But the fact of the matter is most of your shareholders uh, really admire you and respect you for what you've done and your team. Yeah, thanks, George. It said public opinion. Everyone has one. They're great. I, I don't let it bother me. It, uh, I'm very focused as to what we're doing, and I can assure you we're about to transcend some very large industries. 
uh, in upcoming quarters here. So stay tuned, as I say. Thanks, Rob. And, uh, and great way to end it off, buddy. For everybody at home, you've been watching or if you're listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform, to Rob Anson. He's the CEO of Phobi AI, trades in Canada under F-O-B-I for our friends in the S, F-O-B-I-F. For those new to the story, because you're seeing artificial intelligence, record revenues, record guidance, and you got to know more. Start off with the company's profile page on Agoracom because we've got the story neatly laid out for you there because there's so many moving parts because we are talking about a digital transformation that most people don't even see coming. But when you, once you've got that foundational knowledge under your belt, head over to the full BAI website, do your deep dive due diligence. Just don't say 12 months from now, we didn't tell you so. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, this video is over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and then leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our channel so you don't ever miss another great Agoracom small cap video.